isolate Willis on the right-hand side. Cooper looking in that direction for Corey. He's going to throw it towards corner end zone. He's wide open. A Central Michigan touchdown. Boy, he turned the defensive back, Mark Walt, inside out. The 2006 MAC champions were back in town for homecoming. They were the last to beat Ball State at Kelly Short Stadium until Saturday. The Chippewas took down the Cardinals 24-21. We have the highlights for you next on Chippewa Rewind. Central Michigan wins 24 to 21 yesterday, a homecoming victory inside Kelly Short Stadium. I'm Adam Jackson. This is your coach, John Bonamigo. And coach, you come off a couple of losses, get back in the win column. How important was that one on Saturday? It, it was very important for us. I mean, we've been carrying this bad taste around in our mouth. So uh, to go out and get a win at home on homecoming, it was really big. And uh, I thought across the board, we played well. We didn't play a perfect game. Uh, there's always room for improvement, but uh, overall we made enough plays down the stretch to pull out the victory and, and that's what counts. Last week you said yourself that you were eager to get back on the field and play after the performance the week before. Did you sense that urgency from your players this week as well? I, I did all week in practice. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, the, that taste of losing in your mouth, you want to, you know, you're going to carry that around with you and it's really a situation where you just can't wait to get out and play again just to, just to put that behind you. And as for it being homecoming, you know, what was it like to have some former players and former alumni come back and you and your players get some time to spend with them? You know, homecoming is always important wherever you are. Um, to have the 2006 champ MAC championship team in the stadium, to have it work out where, you know, we've got two NFL players, Eric Fisher, and uh, Frank Zombo back because they have their bye. Uh, that was really special. So to have all those guys around, they're a big part of our, our program. All of our alumni are. You know, one of the neatest things for me being back here has been able to connect not only with my, my classmates and my former teammates, but really to connect and really try to bridge the gap between all the generations of former players. It's uh, important to me that they feel like they're still a part of this. And I think it's good for our players to be able to connect with guys that played here, you know, either recently or, or long ago. Well, they certainly got to watch a good performance yesterday. Let's take a look at the game. Central Michigan getting the ball and Corey Willis, a terrific acrobatic catch down the field, comes up with a 39 yard play. Yeah, this was uh, one of the nicer catches I've seen in quite some time. Uh, Cooper does a great job of laying it out there over the safety, and uh, Corey does the rest. Sticky hands, and uh, you know I don't think we're going to show up. I think Mark Chapman had another uh, play later on in the game was very similar to that. So our receivers are ready. They came in, uh, did a very nice job there. Six catches for 105 yards. Willis leads the receivers yesterday. At leads to a field goal to make it three to nothing. And then Ball State able to get a touchdown, advances it to seven to three, but here's Corey Willis once again. Yeah, this was uh, you know in the second quarter, and we're, we're working uh, into the wind a little bit here, so that ball kind of hung up a little bit. Uh, Corey does a nice job of, of high pointing it and using really his body to box out the defender, finishes the catch, is able to stay in bounds, and uh, we move the chains. Very key play right there. Corey Willis has started to develop a leadership role in terms of getting yardage and touchdowns. Do you sense that he's developed that around the younger receiving core as well? You know, he's always been kind of a leader just in terms of how he carries himself. He's a really high energy guy, uh, almost hyper, which, but in a good way. And, uh, you know, it's just great again, watching him develop, not just as a football player, but as a leader and as a young man. He's really come out of his shell. Uh, um, quite a bit here in, in the last year plus that I've known him and uh, he's you know he's got a lot of gas in his tank that's for sure and we're just looking for bigger and better from Corey. So after that play to Corey Willis then down the field one of those young wide receivers a freshman Brandon Childress gets his only catch of the day but yeah, it's a big one. It was a big one this is third and 11 it's, uh, gives us a fresh uh, set of downs and in, in scoring territory here does a great job here trying to turn up field. Uh, 
you know, we'd rather not see the ball come out at the end here. I know he got an earful from Coach Risen uh, uh, after that play, but, uh, you know, fortunately we were able to keep possession of the ball and we got first and goal. How do you handle that situation? Because there's always that play where a player tries to stretch for the goal line to try and get in. I think you have to realistically know whether or not you can reach. And I think right there is just a little bit, a little bit far away. Well, thankfully for you guys, he was down, and that leads to this touchdown from Devin Spaulding. Yeah, it took us a couple tries here, but on third down, we get a clean lane, and uh, Devin's able to dive over the uh, goal line. It's a good lead block there by Joe Bocci. 10 to 7, that puts Central Michigan back in front. Now, take us through the end of the half. You guys get the ball with under a minute left, and you get this draw play. Was the intent just to run out the clock, or? Well, we wanted to see, you know, what happened. And obviously, we got a we got a big big play here, and so uh, now the focus is to get up and clock the ball, uh, and uh, you know, get a play called and see if we can get six and if not we know we can try to stop the clock with an incompletion and kick the field goal. It's a third and ten and Corey Willis wide open in the corner of the end zone. Yeah this was a good job all the way across the board. We get a, a nice clean pocket. They're bringing a five-man pressure here. Uh, Corey does a nice job of stemming the corner inside on the post move which leaves the corner wide open and uh, well-timed accurate throw by Coop and chips are on the board again. Corey Willis this season, 30 receptions. He has 500 yards now to lead Central Michigan. More importantly for you guys, you're in front 17 to seven. We're through 30 minutes. You guys take a 10 point lead into the break. Your confidence level after the first 30 minutes? They're feeling pretty good. We all were, uh, you know, uh, the charge was to come out and finish the game. And uh, we probably didn't start the third quarter off the, quite the way we wanted to. We were hoping to go down and get a, a score, but you know, things happen like that in a, in a football game. You know, Ball State's a very good team. And uh, I think they've beaten us four times, the last four times at home. So uh, we knew that they'd come out and be ready to play. And, and we knew that this was going to go four quarters. Coach is right. The last time the Chippewas beat Ball State and Kelly Shorts was in 2006. We'll look at how they did it in the second half when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. The game is bigger than quick hands, breakaways, or finger rolls. It's bigger than layouts, sellouts, and shooting the lights out. It's bigger than cannons, bells, and wagon wheels in any stadium, field, or school. Because when you play the game with the integrity of the sport, with character, honor, and heart, the game is bigger than just a game. It's a foundation of life. back to throw it looking deep downfield and it's intercepted. intercepted Amari Coleman's gonna seal the deal for the Chippewas 17 to 7 lead for Central Michigan at the break we get started in the second half in the third quarter it seemed like not a ton of action in it but they're able to get a touchdown here a pretty nice catch in the corner of the end zone yeah this was a good uh, throw and catch I thought Amari was had good position here ball pretty much went in the only place it possibly could go uh, receiver makes a nice play on it, and it was originally ruled out of bounds, no catch, but then on the review, uh, reversed and, and to a touchdown. Makes it 17 to 14. Chippewas still have the lead with about six minutes left in the third quarter. We push to the fourth quarter, and this was an absolutely huge play. It certainly was. I mean, Josh does a nice job here of really uh, anticipating the route, uh, breaking up, making the catch and gets a lot of really good help here from the rest of his defensive teammates. Uh, I saw Ricketts there had a block and as well as Kelby Latta. And, uh, you know, he gets it in the end zone. That's our third pick six on the season, uh, his first on his career. Coach, what can you say about your two starting corners, Coleman and Cox? It seems like since you came in last year, they've really stepped up and been impressive. Uh, well, first of all, the talented athletes, uh, they work really hard at their craft and Archie Collins our corners coach does a phenomenal job with his whole room and developing those guys he's uh, he is uh, a, a true taskmaster um, he holds those guys accountable uh, and they're constantly working on the little things and you know that's really important at any position but uh, 
you know, when you play out on that island, you also have a mindset, and some of that's just inherent. Uh, you know, some of those things you can't teach, and both of those guys are special in that regard. Put Central Michigan in front 24 to 14 on the pick six. Ball State is able to come back down, score. It's a three point game with about seven minutes left, and this is a third and eight. And here's Amari Coleman with a terrific defensive play. Yeah, this was a great job by Amari here. You know, just laying out and uh, getting the pass break up there. Again, uh, forces it to fourth down and uh, brings up punting situation. We're able to get the ball back. We aren't uh, able to score on that drive, but we do. Uh, use up some time on the clock. So, you know, again, you get into those end of game th situations, that stuff's really important. So here is the final play. The Chippewas trying to seal the win, and it's an interception in the end zone by who else? Samari Coleman. Samari Coleman does a great job here, just midpoint in the ball. Um, again, had good position on the wide receiver. Got a little help because I think the ball was underthrown, but, you know, he still has to go up and make that play. He goes up, makes the catch. Uh, comes down in the end zone, which is a touchback, so we gain possession on the 20-yard line. You pick up the win, 24-21. It wasn't anything spectacular, but a win's a win. Got to be feeling good after getting that first conference victory. It is. It's good to see guys step up and make plays, um, you know, like Amari did, like Josh did, you know, like our offense did in that final yard, final drive. Uh, you know, Devin had a big, big run. So, you know, being able to close out games at the end, no matter what happens, you know, uh, there's going to be ebb and flow up and down throughout the game, uh, any game. There's going to be momentum changes. It's really how you rebound and, and how you finish. So I was pleased to see us finish the game out the way we did on defense and then on offense and to get the, get the win. It was important. We needed it. It's a conference game. And uh, now we move forward. Well, we'll move forward as well. The Chippewas now 1-1 one one in the MAC, and they'll head back out onto the road next week to NIU, a team that's been very good in the conference of late. We'll take a peek at the Huskies coming back on Chippewa Rewind. Hey, CMU fans. Experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do on campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and much more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Central Michigan now back out onto the road and your team will head out to DeKalb to take on NIU and coach we know how good they've been they've represented the Mac West in the last six Mac championship games a very dangerous game coming up for you yeah it is and um, in a lot of ways it might be a trap game uh, you know they they struggled early they lost their starting quarterback um, you know they got their first win against Ball State a, a week ago uh, played a, a tough game against Western uh, this past Saturday. And, you know, the reason I say it's a, a trap game is, you know, they're, they're a team that's uh, in a program that's really accustomed to winning. Um, you know, that locker room, uh, the talent that they have, the coaching staff, you know, they're not going to go away easily. And so uh, we're going to have to have a good game plan against them on all three, in all three phases, and we're going to have to play very well. This is uh, a team I feel that's much more talented and much, much better than their record. And, you know, even though they've got the, the records one and four, they still only have one conference loss, so they're still very much in the thick of things. Yeah, I was going to say that record is pretty deceiving. They've got a conference win, and then they went on the road to Western Michigan and played the Broncos tough. So in that situation, what are you doing this week to make sure your guys are ready for this road challenge? I think, number one, it's important to know yourself, and then it's important to know your opponent. Uh, in terms of our performance, there is a, a lot of things that we need to get corrected from this past game. So I don't think that that will be a challenge. There's 
you know, there's a laundry list of things that we need to do a lot better. Um, you know, and they will pose some challenges. I think that we just have to understand where they're coming from, what their mindset is going to be, and we've got to do the very best that we can to match or exceed their intensity. This game's important to us. I know it's important to them, but it's, it's every bit as important to us. Last year, NIU came to Kelly Short Stadium for the MAC opener. It was a 29-19 win, but you guys had a real strong second half to come in and get the victory. What do you remember about the Huskies from last season? I just remember them being a very physical football team on both sides of the ball. Uh, their front seven defensively was as good as we played all, all year last year, and I thought uh, they did a really good job of running the football um, you know, throughout that game. And so this is going to be a physical game and one that uh, we need to prepare for. All right, well, the Chippewas are heading out onto the road looking for the second MAC victory and their second win in a row. Coach, good luck to you and your team this weekend to Cal. Thanks very much and uh, appreciate all the support. Student section again this past week was outstanding. It was great to see so many of our alumni coming back and, and being on campus. And uh, again, I'm proud to be your coach, proud to be a Chippewa and fire up chips. The four and two Chippewas head out to take on the one and five Huskies. That's this weekend. Game time is at 3.30 from Husky Stadium. For Coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jackson. Have a great week and fire up chips.